high tide in afternoon. People fly by in the traffic blue. No end, just where you're going. Get to Hey, how you doing today? We are checking out Wild Wood by the mighty Paul Weller. Fantastic song, really interesting chords, great rhythm, exactly what we're expecting from Paul Weller. So let's start off with the chords. Uh, first one, we got capo second fret. We're playing an A minor chord first. Then we're playing an E minor with an A bass, which means that if you just got your A minor chord and you lift off your first and third finger, so you're only leaving the second finger down, you've got your E minor with an A bass. Then you got, we're going to a D minor 7, which is nothing on the thickest two strings, open D, and then 2nd fret, 1st fret, 1st fret. So we're doing like a little mini bar with the first finger there on the thinnest two strings. And then we've got ourselves an E7 sharp 5 flat 9 over D. How's that for a chord name? Uh, luckily for us, it's pretty simple to play. Thickest two strings aren't played. Then we've got open D string. 1st fret, 1st fret, 1st fret. So 1st finger is just barring the thinnest 3 strings with the open D string. Uh, and we've got ourselves an E7 sharp 5 flat 9 over D. Uh, and then we're back to A minor. I think just at the end of the sequence, because it's the sequ same sequence pretty much all the way through, maybe he lifts off his 1st finger for the last couple of strums just to like kind of a fill going in. Um, Rhythm is probably the most important bit with this tune because the chords, once you've got the chords down, they're not, they're not particularly difficult ones. It's getting the chords and the rhythm and then singing over the top that can get a little tricky. I mean, to get the groove right on is also kind of hard with a lot of Paul Weller kind of tunes. Anyway, let's go through that strumming pattern. I'm just going to stay there on the A minor chord now. So this is the pattern. <laughs> What's happening here is we've got a little down strum just on the bass note on beat one, a full down strum on beat two with I've put an accent in the book just to show that that one really needs to be hit out of it. So soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. And then a little up, down, up on the and after three. So three and four, and one, two. play along with me. Hit that rewind. Because that pattern is really important. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. That's pattern one to get down. So you probably want to maybe take that through the whole tune, uh, first of all, because that's, that's really the, the central pattern. We've got a little variation though when it comes to the D minor and the E7 sharp 5 flat 9 chord. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, and 2, 3, and 4, and. So you might want to practice that separately as well. Uh, so again from the D minor, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, and 2, 3, and 4, and. So it's D minor, 2, 3, 4, and. And the and after four is an upstroke, and that's where you change from the D minor. You just lift off your second finger, make sure the th first finger is covering those thinnest three strings, and that'll be an upstroke again, and then an up on the and after one, and two, and three, four, and at the end. So one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and. Right? Really important here that you keep that hand moving all the time. That's the trick again. If you're watching, here we go. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and There's 
nothing complicated going on if you look at it. it uh, the hand continues moving all the time. It's a really big deal. But all of the way through these kind of more complex patterns that the hand keeps moving because that's kind of that's what's keeping you in time. That's keeping your groove locked in. So really big deal. So what I'm going to do now is play through that sequence a few times, just nice and slow, let you get used to it. What you probably want to do is be pausing, going back and check out that first rhythm, make sure you got that down. Check out the second rhythm, make sure you got that down, and then come back and do this little play along you thing. So if we're going here, one, two, three, four, one, two. That's it. You need to practice these kind of grooves slowly and carefully. I did when I was learning this tune. I kind of copped it fairly quickly, wrote down what it was, because I had to write it for you for this book. But then I had to sit down and play it really slowly and kind of get it feeling so it's right. You know, it's, it's not just getting the, the notes and the strums right, although that's very important. It's getting the, the feeling, the groove of it right. And, and that's a lot bigger than just getting the notes right. It's really important that you kind of get that. That's kind of part of the, the development of a guitar player. It's not just getting things right, but getting the feeling of it right. And the best way to cop that is definitely listening to the original recording. Don't listen to me. Listen to the Paul Weller playing it version. You know, that's what you should be copping for sure. So listening to it a whole bunch of times and trying to copy it because there's things that will get copied subconsciously, like the volume of the strums. Because if, you, if I tried to explain to you which ones were strummed louder than others, you know, all of the way through, it'd just be so complicated. It'd just suck all of the music and all of the life out of it. It's, music's not about that. Remember, music's about listening, and listening's the best way to learn it. This sort of, of course, this is going to help you, right? But listening to the original recording a whole bunch of times is definitely the way forward. Uh, with this song as well, a good, great thing, good, great, fantastic thing to be doing would be transcribing the extra parts, right? There's a lot of little lead lines in there that are not difficult. They're single notes, one note at a time. And that's the sort of stuff that when you're learning to transcribe and work stuff out by ear, which is a hugely important skill, this is a great song for that. So I'd urge you, once you've finished learning the tune, maybe go back and get the original recording out and see if you can work out those lead lines as well. I'm sure you'd enjoy it. And you get a great feeling of satisfaction from it too. Hope you enjoy playing this as much as I do. Have a good one. See you for another lesson or song very soon. Bye-bye.